We're going to the moon, and we're just getting started. After 100 days of deep space cruise, the Series 1 lander arrived in lunar orbit. The successful completion of this long voyage not only validates the Series 1 lunar lander design, it represents the completion of a series of successes for iSpace, the verification of our communication technology, structural design, software, maneuver operations, and others, all while having overcome unexpected issues and hurdles along the way. After completing a series of orbital control maneuvers, the lander is scheduled to initiate its automated landing sequence from lunar orbit. Throughout this phase, the lander continues to orbit the moon while approaching its designated landing area. Other than the primary landing location in Atlas Crater, three alternative sites can be targeted in case that any anomalies or other unexpected events prevent the start of the landing sequence for the primary candidate site. In that case, additional orbits are performed to align the lander's trajectory with the new target sites and to allow for optimal use of lunar daytime after landing. During the landing sequence, the lander performs a series of automated actions. Approximately one hour before planned touchdown, the lander begins the deorbit insertion phase, firing its thruster to reduce its parallel altitude from approximately 100 kilometers to 25 kilometers. Continuing on its orbit, the lander moves to the far side of the moon, losing direct line of sight and communication with ground station. Approximately 45 minutes later, the lander reappears from behind the moon and begins its braking burn to slow down its descent. Onboard instruments are used to determine the distance from the lunar surface. The lander utilizes a power descent control algorithm developed by Draper Laboratories using proprietary guidance, navigation, and control software, drawing from years of experience dating back to the Apollo program. In the final moments before landing, the lander relies on its assist thrusters to perform a soft touchdown. Attempting a lunar landing brings many challenges. This is truly a daring endeavor. The impact of landing is mitigated by a shock absorption system inside the landing gear. After landing, the lander performs initial checkout activities to confirm the integrity of its systems. Simultaneously, stable power delivery to all systems is resumed and electricity is generated via the surface-mounted solar arrays. A high-gain antenna will be used when attempting to establish communications with ground station. Next, the deployment and operation of payloads begins such as the UAE's Rashid rover as part of the Emirates Lunar Mission, a transformable lunar robot for the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Experimental devices, such as solid-state batteries by Natera and multiple payloads within the Canadian Space Agency's LEAP program. On Mission 1, surface operations are expected to last approximately 10 days, effectively using lunar daytime for the lander and its payloads to perform various tasks among others, and representing the first such transaction of its kind. Ownership of lunar regolith is planned to be captured by the iSpace Series 1 lander during landing and will be transferred to NASA as part of the Artemis program. As the first mission of the Series 1 lander, data collected during the entire mission duration will contribute towards future developments and will help to improve the performance and reliability of iSpace's hardware during its next missions. Mission 2 is currently planned for 2024, and testing has already begun, with several customers already standing by to have their payloads transported to the moon. Planned for 2025, Mission 3 will be utilized for the fulfillment of NASA CLEPS task orders as a member of Team Draper. Preparations are underway and are progressing rapidly. We're aiming to perform the world's first lunar landing by a commercial enterprise. This is the beginning of our vision to create a cislunar economy iSpace is in it for the long run, and we're just getting started. Never quit the Lunar Quest. Hello everyone, this is Hiroshi Yamakawa, President of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA. I'm sure you are all very excited to be watching the moon landing by iSpace's M1 mission. Currently, the United States, Japan, and many other countries are planning lunar exploration missions. These missions will be conducted through international cooperation and in collaboration with many industries. While many players are aiming for the moon, the M1 mission will be the first commercial attempt by a private company to land on the moon. I'm very happy and proud 
that the Japanese company is about to achieve this challenge. The ice-based lunar lander also carries a transformable lunar robot, the result of joint research between JAXA and private companies. The data acquired by the robot will be used for research and development of a crude pressurized rover and will contribute to Japan's future space exploration activities. JAXA will steadily carry out the mission of the transformable lunar robot and pass the torch to future lunar exploration missions. Lastly, I wish the M1 mission a successful landing on the moon. Dear colleagues and friends, as Director General of ESA, it is my special pleasure to convey my best regards to the landing event to the Hakuto-R Lunar Lander Mission 1 of iSpace. Under commercial contract with iSpace Europe, ESA was and is responsible for ensuring communication between the spacecraft and its teams on Earth through the mission. The agency's global network of tracking stations is used to transmit commands to the spacecraft and receive scientific data and status information from Mission 1 and the experiments carried out on the Moon. The mission underpins the successful cooperation between ESA and iSpace. Such collaboration schemes between new space companies and space agencies open up exciting opportunities for the future of lunar exploration and other domains. Accounting for new space approaches is also a central element of ESA's Agenda 2025. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm convinced that the Hakuto R Mission 1 is only the beginning of many fascinating projects and activities to come, and I wish you a successful event and a very happy landing. Thank you. Hi, I have been following the M1 mission with great attention. I am confident that this mission will provide precious data and experience which will support iSpace commercial development in the years to come. iSpace has been among the first space resources focused companies to come to Luxembourg and we are very proud to have been able to support the team since the very beginning. After the successful listing of iSpace on the Tokyo Stock Exchange beginning of April, we look forward to the next chapter of iSpace success story and particularly to the M2 mission which will onboard a rover made in Luxembourg. Ion Group provides a key element of the propulsion system for the lander and the assembly and integration facilities. Our orbital propulsion teams supported iSpace with the integration on the testing of the entire vehicle in our clean rooms in Lampolshausen as well as in external facilities in Germany. In addition, iSpace and Ariane Group have teamed up under an ESA commercial partnership pilot phase to provide Europe with an integrated transportation system to the moon combining the Ariane 6 launcher and the iSpace lander. With this M1 mission, iSpace has become the first commercial company to reach lunar orbit. The landing attempt will mark first use of an Ariane Group propulsion system for landing on the moon. Regardless of the outcome, the iSpace M1 mission is a huge accomplishment. This is a striking example of synergistic collaboration between what some would call an established space company and new space companies. iSpace is a very dynamic and innovative new space company. We appreciate their trust and their agile and efficient ways of working with us. This demonstrates Ion Group's ability to provide state-of-the-art equipment and support to new space companies. Good luck for the landing. Three, two, one.
ignition. Hello and welcome to our global live stream of the planned lunar landing of Mission 1 in iSpace HACTO-R program. The main language of this event is English, but you can watch and listen with simultaneous Japanese translation by accessing the stream on our HACTO-R channel. My name is Kevin Zaleski and I am the MC for today's event. Thank you very much for joining us. Many of you may have followed the launch of Mission 1 last December. Now, after several months of operations in space, our Series 1 lander is quickly approaching one of the most exciting moments during Mission 1 in our HACTO-R program, the first ever private lunar landing. For those of you not familiar with us, iSpace is a global lunar exploration company engaging in the lunar quest. Our vision is to expand human activity into space and to develop the future cis-lunar economy by offering reliable payload delivery and data services. iSpace has three offices, its headquarters in Japan, as well as steadily growing offices in the US and Luxembourg. Our first commercial lunar exploration program consists of two missions, the planned lunar landing on mission one and lunar landing and surface exploration on mission two. With Mission 1 in progress as we speak, we have already started preparations, such as testing, for Mission 2, currently planned for 2024. Furthermore, iSpace is rapidly progressing development for Mission 3, currently planned for 2025, which will not only use our next generation Series 2 lander, but will also deliver payloads for the NASA CLIPS program to lunar orbit and surface. iSpace is a member of Team Draper and proud to contribute to the Artemis program during its upcoming Mission 3. Today, we are following the progress of our mission from a venue close to the HACTO-R Mission Control Center. We are here at the Neo Skide Kurasten exhibition at the National Museum of Emerging Science and Innovation on Odaiba, Tokyo. As you can see, we are surrounded by a moon-themed landscape including a full-scale model of our Series 1 lander, so you can imagine that everyone is super excited to land on the real moon today. Our Series 1 lander on Mission 1 is being monitored from the HACTO-R Mission Control Center, or MCC, during its descent towards the lunar surface. As you can see in this live feed, our team is getting ready for landing. Now, before we continue with our coverage here on location, let us he first hear from our MCC crew about what exactly we expect to happen during the next approximately 50 minutes. Hi, everyone. We are the iSpace Operation Team, and we are here today in the Hakutuar MCC Mission Control Center to execute a really special operation. So we have worked so hard to get to this point in which, in which we are going to perform the landing sequence. We are more than 20 engineers uh, getting ready, preparing, and executing these special operations. And you are going to be able to follow from home. You are going to have a special animation based in our data in which you will be able to follow the whole uh, landing sequence. For us, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, and Janelle is going to explain why. Now, the reason why it's a little more difficult for us is because, one, 
all we can do during this time is monitor the lander because the landing sequence is actually autonomous. So another reason why it's going to be a little difficult is because during the landing sequence, we are going to experience something called an occultation. Now an occultation is something that occurs when the moon is between the lander and our ground station on Earth. So during our landing sequence, you can see our lander is going to come behind the moon like so, and for about 40 minutes, we're going to lose communication with it. And then, only until we pop out the other side will we have communication again and be able to see our lander autonomously land on the moon. As we heard from Janelle earlier, the lander is expected to have already performed its deorbit insertion maneuver autonomously. As you can see on our live status display here, our lander is now on the moon's far side and heading for its designated landing area. We expect to reestablish communication in approximately 30 minutes. Now, I would like to give the word to iSpace founder and CEO Takeshi Hakamada. Hello, my name is Takeshi Hakamada, founder of Shibo iSpace. In 2010, a small company with a big vision was born. And after 13 years and meeting many cargoes and supporters, we have reached to the day when our lander will land on the moon. In the early days, not many people believed that we could actually land on the moon but we kept breathing and they worked very hard. And then as a result, I'm really proud to be here with you today. Since our mission one launch in December last year, our lander and our team have already achieved amazing things. Succeeding, excuse me, uh, succeeding operation of privately funded and then developed hardware and the software and the payload in space for over 100 days. Now we are getting close to our destination for mission one, lunar landing and surface operation. However, I want to emphasize again that our accomplishment, eight out of 10 milestone successes, we contribute to our development of our next missions, mission two and mission three, which already have started in parallel. I want to thank everyone for their contributions. And I really excited to see the outcome of this critical moment of mission one. And I cannot wait to apply everything we have been learned toward our future missions. Everything we have achieved until this point, we already considered tremendous success. Thank you, and the let's land on the moon. Thank you, Hakamada-san. We are very excited to give you a closer look at the status of our lander and what we expect to happen today. But first, let us hear from iSpace CTO Ryo Ujie for details about our achievements during mission one so far and what we hope to achieve today. So Ujie-san, can you tell us a little bit about the mission one milestone? Okay, yeah, sure. And you know, as you know, in total, we have a 10 success milestone, but we have already completed eight of 10 milestone. Then let me explain our achievement one by one. Then our first milestone, success one, is a completion of launch preparation. Because you know, even before launch, we had to do a lot of things, including testing, assembly, integration, and so on. That was also a really great achievement for us. And then after that, success two happened. That is like a separation from a launch vehicle. Because okay. you know, during the launch operation, the mm -hmm. lander needed to withstand really mm -hmm. harsh mechanical condition. Then success three came. Success three is a uh, completion of initial critical operation. That was a really critical moment for us. Then, but uh, finally we established really 
stable communication attitude and power condition in the, of the lander. Then after that, in order to fly to the moon, we need to control our, you know, the uh, trajectory, I mean, lander trajectory. Then, you know, the, we carried out the first orbital control maneuver. Then we achieved you know, success four. Then after one month you know, steady flight operation, success five came, and then we kept operating a few more orbital control maneuver. Then, you know, if, when we are ready, we were ready for the first lunar orbit insertion maneuver. That is a success six. And then success seven is the moment to enter the lunar gravity region. Then the lander carried out really long burn to enter the gravity region. Then that was also really, really you know, critical operation, but we successfully completed that operation too. Even you know, during the lunar orbiting phase, we carried out a few more you know, orbital control maneuvers, and then now we are ready for the uh, landing sequence. Then now we are in success eight. Then we will move on success nine. Success nine is the completion of our landing sequence. Landing sequence itself is just one hour, but most critical moment in our mission. Then if we successfully land on the moon and then establish the steady communication and power status, finally we deployed our customer rover and then complete success 10. Okay, so there are 10 milestones. Do you think you could tell us a little bit more about some of the critical moments that you experienced? <laughs> okay, definitely the success three. And success three is the completion of initial critical operation. In general, of course, this is a uh, you know the uh, really critical moment for all spacecraft. But uh, you know, the, even in our case, we were struggling with the completion of this success milestone because the you know, communication and the attitude were not as our plan. But uh, you know, our flight team you know, showed really great performance, and then finally we achieved this moment. And then this success gave us more confident in our you know, flight capability. So you mentioned several times about maneuvers. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Okay, yes. The maneuver means an you know, orbital control maneuver. You know, then when we you know, carry out that orbital control maneuver, we always use this, our main propulsion system. Then the, by carrying out this orbital control maneuver, we can control the trajectory of the lander. Then even you know the when we enter the lunar gravity region, we also need to carry out really really long orbital control maneuver operation. It is a more than seven minutes burn. Burn means you know we need to keep activating this propulsion system more than you know the seven minutes. Then that was a really really critical operation, and then you know the, we were really really nervous about that. Then this is also a great achievement to carry out this type of really critical operation as a commercial space startup. Then this success seven, you know, the uh, achievement was a really great moment for us. Yeah. So there are actually quite a few milestones. Why did you choose to set 10? Okay, yeah, because you know, our mission is not zero sum game. You know, the, in each steps, you know, the, we can learn a lot of things. We can gain a lot of experience, knowledge, and we can also prove our flight capability in each step. Then we set a 10 milestone. Then in each milestone, we have experienced different, you know, the uh, operation, and we proved different capability. Then we set a 10 milestone and then to, to show our capability and then based on this milestone we can deflect our lessons learned into the future mission too. Thank you Ujie san. Now we welcome Yoshitsugu Hitachi, our lead lander system engineer who oversees the overall integration of our lander system and payloads. Welcome back, Hitachi-san. Thank you, Kevin. So, uh, our CTO, ujie san just told us that we have achieved Milestone 8 already. Looking at our status display, uh, where do you think we are now with our lander? Uh, yes, Kevin. So, as uh, our CTO, ujie san just explained, so we have completed all the milestones up to success 8, which means that we are ready for the landing sequence. That means we are now moving towards success nine, uh, which is lunar landing. So as you can see, the lander is now currently on the backside of the moon. 
and waiting for it to re-establish the communication with the ground station and reappear from the, the back side of the moon to, uh, uh, to finally land on the sunny sun side of the moon now. Thank you, Ishtach-san. And with the planned lunar landing approaching quickly, let us have a look at a summary of today's expected events. We're going to the moon, and we're just getting started. After 100 days of deep space cruise, the Series 1 lander arrived in lunar orbit. The successful completion of this long voyage not only validates the Series 1 lunar lander design, it represents the completion of a series of successes for iSpace, the verification of our communication technology, structural design, software, maneuver operations, and others all while having overcome unexpected issues and hurdles along the way. After completing a series of orbital control maneuvers, the lander is scheduled to initiate its automated landing sequence from lunar orbit. Throughout this phase, the lander continues to orbit the moon while approaching its designated landing area. Other than the primary landing location in Atlas Crater, three alternative sites can be targeted in case that any anomalies or other unexpected events prevent the start of the landing sequence for the primary candidate site. In that case, additional orbits are performed to align the lander's trajectory with the new target sites and to allow for optimal use of lunar daytime after landing. During the landing sequence, the lander performs a series of automated actions. Approximately one hour before planned touchdown, the lander begins the deorbit insertion phase, firing its thruster to reduce its parallel altitude from approximately 100 kilometers to 25 kilometers. Continuing on its orbit, the lander moves to the far side of the moon, losing direct line of sight and communication with ground station. Approximately 45 minutes later, the lander reappears from behind the moon and begins its braking burn to slow down its descent. Onboard instruments are used to determine the distance from the lunar surface. The lander utilizes a power descent control algorithm developed by Draper Laboratories using proprietary guidance, navigation, and control software, drawing from years of experience dating back to the Apollo program. In the final moments before landing, the lander relies on its assist thrusters to perform a soft touchdown. Attempting a lunar landing brings many challenges. This is truly a daring endeavor. The impact of landing is mitigated by a shock absorption system inside the landing gear. After landing, the lander performs initial checkout activities to confirm the integrity of its systems. Simultaneously, stable power delivery to all systems is resumed and electricity is generated via the surface-mounted solar arrays. A high-gain antenna will be used when attempting to establish communications with ground station. Next, the deployment and operation of payloads begins such as the UAE's Rashid rover as part of the Emirates Lunar Mission, a transformable lunar robot for the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Experimental devices, such as solid-state batteries by Natera and multiple payloads within the Canadian Space Agency's LEAP program. On Mission 1, surface operations are expected to last approximately 10 days, effectively using lunar daytime for the lander and its payloads to perform various tasks among others, and representing the first such transaction of its kind. Ownership of lunar regolith is planned to be captured by the iSpace Series 1 lander during landing and will be transferred to NASA as part of the Artemis program. As the first mission of the Series 1 lander, data collected during the entire mission duration will contribute towards future developments and will help to improve the performance and reliability of iSpace's hardware during its next missions. Mission 2 is currently planned for 2024, and testing has already begun, with several customers already standing by to have their payloads transported to the moon. Planned for 2025, Mission 3 will be utilized for the fulfillment of NASA CLIPS task orders as a member of Team Draper. Preparations are underway and are progressing rapidly. We're aiming to perform the world's first lunar landing by a commercial enterprise. This is the beginning of our vision to create a cislunar economy iSpace is in it for the long run, and we're just getting started. Never quit the Lunar Quest. Now, as explained during the video, 
our Series 1 lander continues to orbit the moon while getting closer and closer to the surface. There is no communication link with the lander for a large portion of this process, but the required actions are pre-scheduled and the lander executes them according to our calculations. Let us hear a bit more about what exactly we expect to happen until planned touchdown again from Hitachi-san. So Hitachi-san, tell us a bit about the expected initial status of our lander before landing. Yeah, thank you very much, Kevin. I'm pleasure uh, to be here to explain all the sequences uh, of the landing. So uh, basically, we do have six different phases, as uh, I think the animation showed uh, previously. So all those phases are very important to achieve the successful landing. So as you can see, the first step, what we're calling phase one, uh, this is the orbit uh, insertion. So the orbit insertion uh, is um, short burn of our main engine to the orbit from the orbit the the circular lunar orbit and enters into a new trajectory for the landing um, so in this phase um, we are uh, still the lander is at the very high speed about 6,000 kilometers per hour and uh, uh, then do uh, uh, less than a minute of uh, a main propulsion system to fire the main propulsion system to do, to this this burn. I see. And what happens next? And the next step is the cruise landing phase. So in this phase, the lander cruises in this new trajectory after DOI. So in this phase, basically the velocity doesn't change much, but the altitude changes drastically from 100 kilometer to uh, 25 kilometers. And so basically the lunar gravity is still pulling the lander to uh, decrease the, uh, the altitude and up to 25 kilo. And this phase actually lasts between 40 and 50 minutes uh, in the entire sequence. So entire sequence is about one hour and seven minutes. But this, this phase is actually the longest phase in, in the mission. And it, also the very important point is that after the phase two is completed and before the phase, the next phase starts, uh, the lander is expected to reappear from the backside of the moon again. I see, and what happens in the next phase? Ah, yes, so next phase is phase three. So this is a breaking burn phase. So breaking burn phase is, as it says, we are going to start breaking. It, it means that we, we're going to reduce the speed for the landing. So as you can see now, the velocity now, um, we are changing the velocity from 6,000 kilometer per hour to, uh, to 100, 100 uh, kilometer hour. So basically we are going from the spacecraft speed to like a Shinkansen speed now to, uh, to land on the moon. So then altitude also changing uh, from 25 kilo to uh, 3 kilo uh, in this phase. So the lander gets closer and closer to the moon and keeps slowing down. What happens next? Yes, the so next phase is phase four. So in phase four, the lander still continues to break, but uh, still going over about 300 kilometer per hour. Uh, so it's still at the Shinkansen speed, but then it's uh, changing the orientation to a uh, vertical orientation, pointing its, you know, the thrusters uh, straight to down to the to the lunar surface. So. As you can see, at the end of this phase, the lander is going to be only uh, one kilometer above the lunar surface. And next, it gets really interesting, doesn't it? Yes, this is uh, very exciting. And those, those phases, all of the phases are most important. But num uh, the, those number five and number six uh, are, the, I, I can say, the most important phases in the entire sequence. Thank you. And then the moment everyone is waiting for the final phase. Uh, yes, so the final phase is uh, uh, phase six. So this is terminal landing. So here, the velocity is now um, gets to 70 kilometer per hour. So now it's changing from Shinkansen speed to now to the bicycle riding speed. And eventually uh, at the end, um, it's going to uh, uh, walking uh, kind of pace. So then altitude, uh, it's changing from 20 meter to zero. So this is the very last uh, moment of the landing, and uh, we are going to shut off uh, the main engine and relies only on the assist thrusters to adjust the attitude and uh, for the final moments and hopefully for the soft landing.
Thank you, Ishtat-san. We are all rooting for our lander, getting closer and closer to the lunar surface. And now let's have a look maybe at our status screen again. Um, Tatsan, where does this put us in the landing approach right now? Uh, yes, so we, I think the, uh, the phase one have uh, been already completed, expected to have already completed by now. So we are now in the phase two, which is a cruise phase. So the lander should be now um, descending from the altitude of 100 kilo towards uh, to the 25 kilo. So we are in the middle of that process right now. Thank you, Ishtachi san and Hakamada san. Are you slowly getting a little bit nervous? Not at all. I'm just watching a successful riding. Thank you very much. And now I would also like to welcome distinguished guests on our stage today. The first is Professor Yuichi Tsuda. Professor Tsuda not only teaches at Tokyo University, but is also in charge of the Hayabusa 2 program at the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Tsuda san, welcome. Yeah, thank you, and thank you for letting me be here. And I'm really excited to witness this great event. And congratulations to Hakamada-san and the iSpace team for uh, the success so far. And I was leading the uh, mission called Hayabusa 2. That is an asteroid sample return mission that was successfully completed three years ago. So what I did there was uh, to fly the spacecraft to an ever unexplored asteroid Ryugu and landed there twice and collected the samples and returned them back to the Earth. So, <laughs> so isn't it cool? So what you're going to do is to send a space car to a celestial body that has 20,000 times higher gravity than that of Ryugu, only with the power of the private sector. So what a challenge. So if this is not a challenge, nothing can be challenged, called challenge. So I think the history can be made only by those who challenges. And challenges would not be possible without taking a risk. And the risk can be taken only by those who dreams. So iSpace teams, you are all excellent dreamers. So I hope all your success. And more importantly, I'm an engineer. So from the engineering point of view, get as much data as possible throughout this learning process and recall all the experience throughout this mission for, for, for the uh, more sustainable lunar activity that you are going to do and for to expand uh, this uh, lunar exploration activity to a more global one. So Godspeed iSpace, Godspeed Hack to R. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Tsuda, and we wish you all the best with your future endeavors. Please enjoy the show. Next, I am happy to welcome Airbus Ventures Manager, partner Thomas Delawin, here on stage with us. Airbus Ventures has been one of our first international shareholders, and they possess a strong insight into the global space industry. Thank you. And first, congratulations, Akamara san, the entire iSpace team, on this historic moment. Thank you very much. And thank you for bringing all of us closer to the moon and to the moon, right? So Elvis Ventures, Louis, my friend, and the entire team, we cannot be more proud today uh, to be here joining in this extraordinary uh, milestone for the space economy. Maybe a word about the moon. Uh, we uh, at Airbus Ventures and you at iSpace value the moon as a uh, vital system component uh, in harnessing natural resources uh, in order to deliver uh, uh, clean energy, um, rare metal, but also a biosphere-friendly manufactured product to Earth. But the moon's development is also critical uh, for alleviating the compounding stresses that we've seen uh, on Earth, climate and Earth biodiversity. 
this is also uh, a tremendous opportunity, a business and economic opportunity that now we see iSpace uniquely positioned to pioneer. So uh, this world is full of planetary system challenges. iSpace now with the talent, the global mindset, but also this sustained vision and the thorough execution and the global team building along these years of development is a key actor to address those planetary challenges. So our message to the team is to keep going. The moon is away. And please, again, congratulations for this historic moment. Thank you. Thank you, Akamana san. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Delawa, and we are very excited for what the future may bring for private space. Now, I am very excited to welcome another iSpace crew member here at our venue, Scott Moon, our lead assembly, testing, and integration manager, who helped not only build the Series 1 lander for Mission 1, but who is already working on our Mission 2 lander. Hello, Scott, and please take a seat and tell us a bit more about how the Mission 1 lander came into existence. Uh, sure, Kevin. So I had the good fortune to join iSpace in November 2020, and in April of 2021, the iSpace team was deployed to Germany to begin building the M1 lander. We spent the next year in Germany building the lander in, uh, in those facilities, and after one year, we moved to Munich to start our test campaign on that lunar lander. When we were in Munich, we ran tests that allowed us to simulate the environment that we would see in deep space. We ran tests to simulate the environment we would see during the SpaceX Falcon 9 launch. And we ran tests of all of the systems that we needed to use while we were in orbit, while we were descending, and while we were in operation on the moon. Once we finished all those tests, we packed up our operations in Germany, and we flew on a specialized cargo transport over the Atlantic to arrive at Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral. The uh, AIT team personally uh, escorted the lander over. And once we landed in Florida, we spent two months with our launch preparations, which included fueling the lander and doing a final systems checkout. After those two months, we said goodbye to our lunar lander. We put it inside the fairing, and it was integrated into the launch vehicle to be launched in December of 2022. That's basically the M1 story in a nutshell. Thank you, Scott. You're welcome. And again, thank you for your hard work. <laughs> now, of course, our Series 1 lander is not going to the moon empty-handed. It is car carrying several payloads expected to start operations on the lunar surface after landing. Let us hear about our payload customers on M1 from iSpace Chief Revenue Officer Atsushi Saiki. <laughs> Saiksan, tell us, who is going to the moon with us? Okay, thank you, Kevin. Uh, on mission one, uh, we are carrying a number of uh, government and commercial payloads. Our payload service does not only consist of bringing something to the moon, but also iSpace closely communicate and coordinate with its uh, customers to integrate each payload into the lander and its system. Secondly, the payloads are tested before the launch to verify their ability to survive the long journey to the moon. And iSpace further uh, offer power delivery and communication service to payloads that require it during transit to the moon, as well as after successful landing. Throughout the mission, our Series 1 lander also offer protection from the harsh environment of space by providing thermal control and other services. Our payloads on Mission 1 vary in size, mass, and objectives. Some of them are mobile, and we plan to deploy them from our lander after touchdown, such as the MBRC Rashid rover and the JAXA transformable lunar robot. After deployment, these rovers will begin their mission objectives on the lunar surface while sending and receiving data and commands via our mission control center in Tokyo. Other payloads will stay integrated into the lander. We carry experimental solid state battery for Nitera, 
which perform verification tests of this new battery technology under extreme environment in space and the lunar surface. Further, we carry several payloads within the Canadian LEAP program, an AI-powered flight computer by MCSS, as well as a camera system featuring wide-angle cameras by Canadensis. Further, our partnership program involves corporations from various industries and fields in the exciting new challenge towards the moon. We cooperate with companies, as you can see on the screen here. We believe that the transport and operation of these payloads provides an exceptional value to our customers, not only in terms of space and lunar exploration, but also in the development of new technologies that could benefit human society on Earth in the future. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Saik San. And we are all super excited to bring more and more companies to the moon. Yes. Now, for a bit of background on how our lander and its payloads are deployed and operated after landing, let's hear it from our MCC crew again. Thank you. As soon as our spacecraft detects contact with the lunar surface, it will go to TDM, which is touchdown mode. It will cut off the engines and make sure that we're stable on the lunar surface. After that, we'll perform many checkouts to make sure every system and our customers are still working as expected. One of the first things that we will do is deploy our high gain antenna when we're on the surface. So our high gain antenna will allow us to download all of the data and pictures and photos that we've taken throughout our mission. The lunar environment is completely different than the environment we've been facing up until this point. Most people probably think the moon is this cold, desolate place, but it can get very hot in the sunlight, up to 120 degrees C. So the first thing we do again is a full checkout of our system. And once we have our high gain antenna, which allows us to send much more data back to Earth than we could in cruise, then we're ready to deploy our customer rovers. The bigger one is the MBRSC rover. So it has been flying up here, once it's time to deploy, the arm folds down with the rover on it, and then we release the rover, and it can drive off to go do some great science. Thank you to Katie and Haroon, and all the best during those first moments of surface operations. Now, we are happy to have a quick message from a very special guest, Yamazaki Naoko-san, a former JAXA astronaut who flew on the space shuttle to the International Space Station will very soon be connecting remotely with us. Yamazaki-san, hello, can you hear us? Hello, Kevin. Yes, I can hear you very well, and congratulations for your achievements so far. Yes, I am so thrilled and honored to be with you for the upcoming historic moment, first ever private lunar landing. First of all, I'm so proud of the entire iSpace team, including families, for the remarkable achievement to get this point. As an astronaut, I cannot overstate the importance of this mission, which expands our frontier for all humankind. My dream is to open a school on the moon someday so that various students from various countries and regions can learn together on the moon watching the Earth from a distance. The moon has a huge potentials in many ways, so it is important M1 and following missions will secure high frequent transportation to the moon, which will secure human presence on the moon and allows us to have a big dream. Also as a member of the temporary uh, member of National Space Policy Committee of Japan, M1 means a lot to governments too. iSpace is the first company to be covered by Space Resources Act in Japan and awarded a contract with NASA for lunar resources. 
And M1 contains UAE's Lorna Rover and Canadian Japanese parents and so on. Uh, when I visited iSpace Mission Control Center in Tokyo a couple of months ago, I had the privilege to write a message on the wall and I wrote, fly our dreams to the moon. So thank you very much for flying our dreams to the moon. So proud of your never give up spirits. All the best and Godspeed. Thank you so much, Yamazaki-san, and it's always a great pleasure to have you with us. Now, let us have another quick look at our status screen. Hitachi-san. Uh, looking at the status screen, I hope we have it now here soon. Yes, what phase would you put us on now, more or less? Yes, I think I believe uh, the lander is still in the phase two, that that's a cruise, cruise phase. So. As I said, uh, this, this phase takes about 40 to 50 minutes. So I hope that in the, uh, I think if, uh, about in the 10, 10 minutes or so, uh, I hope that the next, uh, the breaking burn starts. But at the moment, I, I believe that the lander still is in the cruise phase, uh, flying with a speed of 6,000 uh, kilometer per hour. And, but altitude now, you, you can see the altitude. Altitude is now uh, getting now closer to 25, uh, a kilo from the surface. Thank you, Hitachi san. And Hakamada san, we soon hope to regain contact with our lander. Are you looking forward to meeting him again? Yes, I really looking forward to reconnect our lander and then start the next phase of the landing. Thank you. And while we wait, let's see where exactly our lander is planning to set down on the moon. We are collaborating with a group of international experts to have finding suitable landing sites on the moon. This can allow the missions to have 12 days of sunlight on the lunar surface. Let's start with where are these four candidate landing sites? Well, we're having four uh, landing sites. Uh, one prime landing site, which is the most exciting one we find, which is at Atlas Crater. Um, and we have three backup landing sites. Uh, one is not too far from the prime landing site, which is Lacus Somniorum. One then in the Western Hemisphere, where we have uh, Oceanus Procellarum and Sinus Iridum. All of our landing sites are in the Northern Hemisphere and, uh, well, are very exciting for their scientific potential and are well suitable to act as backup landing site in case the landing does not work off any of the others. We selected our site using both uh, scientific and technical criteria. So, for instance, we want to go to a place relatively flat, devoid of boulders, but we also want to maximize the science output with having some geological diversity. And in order to proceed, we collected data from space mission currently orbiting the moon that we processed. We tried to translate all criteria into calculation steps, and then we came up with a list of possible sites that we scored and we ranked. I think from the beginning, the landing site selection working group started with having safety in mind, the safety of landing and also safety of uh, Rashid rover traversing uh, the moon. Rashid rover is designed to, uh, to overcome obstacles of uh, up to 10 centimeters of height and also to drive over the slopes of maximum 20 degrees. When we reach there, definitely we have a lot of ideas to do a lot of science experiments. We are going to study the regolith uh, on, on the landing site and also we are going to study the thermal characteristics and also we have a nice and exciting ideas on experimenting with different materials interacting with the regolith on the landing site. So um, my role was to, to I guess, uh, further optimize our landing site selection, make sure that there was alignment with um, both our lander team here in iSpace, as well as our other customer payloads, um, as well as to establish uh, our own uh, science objectives um, to help with the continuous improvement of iSpace lander and rover exploration missions into the future. 
Um, each of the four selected landing sites um, are incredibly uh, unique and will offer um, fantastic scientific value. Um, and they're just really exciting opportunities. For like to land on any of the given landing sites, we have to make sure that a spacecraft is passing over it. But then as the moon rotates over in its own axis, uh, we only have one given opportunity every lunar month, right? So every 28 days. So in order to minimize the time that uh, passes between any of the prime and the, uh, uh, any of the landing opportunities, uh, in case there's any deviation from, from the nominal, then uh, we selected these three landing sites that will be accessible within just uh, a few days. And a big thank you to our colleagues at MBRSC, CRPG, iSpace Europe, and everyone else who contributed to this very critical part of Mission 1. Now, while we wait for the lander to reappear from the far side of the moon and reconnect with our ground station, let us hear about what we can look forward to over the next couple of years. I welcome iSpace Director and Chief Finance Officer Junpei Nozaki. Okay, uh, thank you, Kevin. So uh, while I wait for Mission 1 landing, let's talk about the future. So uh, we have Mission 2 next year and Mission 3 in 2025. And let me explain. Mission 2 will use a CIS-1 lander, the same as uh, right now in the space, but we will also bring a micro rover, which currently our Luxembourg team is developing. And also for Mission 3, uh, right now our next generation lander, CIS-2 lander, is manufactured in the U.S. Colorado, Denver. And uh, this uh, will uh, bring uh, two satellites to the uh, lunar orbit. And also, they will land on the far side, uh, Uragawa, of the moon. So this is a very fantastic uh, mission uh, in going forward in 2025. And also, mission three, we are going to bring NASA payload uh, under a, a program called CRIPS, a commercial lunar payload service. So we will contribute to a NASA Artemis program too. So next page. I'd like to, st uh, to stress the uh, most important thing about a sustainable business model. So, we are not a company doing just one single mission, but rather we are doing three missions uh, at, at the same time, all together. This is very important because uh, while we are doing mission one, we can feedback what we learn from our mission one and the data what we acquired from mission one to mission two and mission three rapidly. And this is really important to improve our maturity of technology and also maturity of a business model. And also uh, for startup companies, the financing is really important. But uh, we are very proud and we are very uh, fortunate that we could raise more than 300 million US dollar of uh, money so far to support not only one single mission, but all three missions together. So uh, this is an important point to create a sustainable business as I space. So, uh, we are now uh, closer to the landing, and uh, I believe, I strongly believe, we can have a good achievement. But, uh, however, if any, whatever the outcome is, uh, our, continue, our company will go and continue. And also, uh, I promise, uh, never uh, quit the Luna Quest. So, thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you, Nozaki-san. <laughs> And we are all very excited to see the progress on our follow-up missions. Now I would like to welcome Scott Moon on the stage once again. Scott, join us once more, please. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Scott. And we just heard that preparation for Mission 2 are already in full swing. Tell us a little bit more about the ongoing assembly, integration, and testing activities. Sure. So during the M1 integration and testing that I described earlier, we gained a lot of valuable information about how the lander responds and how it fits together. And our design teams have already incorporated all that information into the design of the M2 lander, making some small improvements to improve the performance. Also, the last 100 days in spaceflight have given us very valuable information about how we perform in space. And this information has also already been incorporated into our updated design. So we spent the last four months with our teams building a development model of the M2 lander, and the testing on this has been completed two weeks ago. This information tells us how the new design will be performing. We are also incorporating this inform information into our new design, and I'm really happy to announce that as of last week, we started building M2 flight model lander. The first pieces have already been assembled. 
and we are on our way to the M2 launch. Thank you, Scott. You're welcome. And it's really amazing that even while Mission 1 is still ongoing, we are already working on our next mission. So good luck to you and your team. So um, I have a good uh, life update for all of you. We received word that the lander has reappeared from the backside of the moon. And it's on its final orbit, only minutes away from the planned landing. So, Hakamada-san, seems like it's really happening. Yes. How do you feel? Well, it's really happening. Yes, uh, very, very excited to see very final phase of the, of the landing soon. Yes, so uh, we can really just hope and send our good energies towards the lander. So Hitachi-san, looking at the display, what is the status? Uh, so it looks like we, I think that the display is still the simulation modes, but I, I think it seems that um, if everything is going as expected, I think we have, we should have entered now the black and burn phase. So it should be, um, maybe the altitude is about 25 kilo. And if everything is okay, then I think breaking burn is uh, continuing to slow down the speed from uh, 6,000, uh, from um, about 100,000 uh, kilometer per hour to 100, uh, sorry, a few hundred kilometer per hour. Thank you, Ishtar san And actually, for everyone here, we were able to download several images and videos from our lander over the last few days. Again, these are not real-time images, but they were taken from lunar orbit around 100 kilometer altitude. So let's have a look at these images. So this first image, Hakamada-san, look at it. It's just beautiful. Yeah, beautiful and then very incredible pictures taken from our lander. It is truly amazing how a privately funded spacecraft can capture the moon and the Earth like this and send the image back. Now, Hitachi-san, looking at this, I think this image also contains some scientific, very, very interesting speciality. Can you explain it a bit more? Oh, yes, yeah. So this is uh, the picture of the, uh, the Earth lies on the moon, but most interestingly, you know, as you can see, if you can take a very closer look at the Earth, so we see actually the shadow of the moon uh, on, on the Earth. So you see that um, uh, black spot there, the closer, close to the Australia. So this is actually the shadow of the moon. So we, we took this picture uh, during the solar eclipse. So it's really interesting to see this kind of uh, the phenomena. Uh, not from the Earth, but from the lunar orbit. So this is very interesting and very exciting picture. Thank you, Ishtar san And I believe we also have a video that I would like to share with you. Wow. <laughs> Hakamada-san, doesn't this look amazing? Well, this is real video. Yes. Not CZ. No. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's really hard to believe but it looks amazing. So, Hitachi-san, we see something in the lower part of the video. What is this? Yes, I think this is a part of the our lander. So this is a part that we call uh, MLI, a multi-layer uh, 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 MLI. And we see the Pratana logo at the, on, on the right, right hand side. So it's really great. It's really amazing to see this you know, shadow and the bright part and the shadow part of the of the of the moon, so because there's no atmosphere on the moon, so it's we can clearly see the lunar surface, and this is really amazing uh, video. I'm I'm really amazed. Thank you. And I believe we have one more image. Yet again, a video. <laughs> Kamada san. Well, another amazing, well, video, I cannot tell any word. 
beautiful. It really transcends words and it is just amazing. So now I would like to ask Hakamada-san and Hitachi-san to join our crew on your seats. And for the last few minutes, we are almost five minutes before planned landing, I would like to ask you to continue viewing the event and let's all root for our lander while we wait for the planned landing. Thank you. And now, looking at the status screen, the lander is still moving over 2,000 kilometers per hour. Please let me point out here that we might lose communication with our lander during descent. This is to be expected, and we will reconnect as quickly as possible. Also, if you see any sudden changes in the simulation, this might also be caused by our system of how we simulate it. Even if the lander appears to be on the surface or anywhere else, please wait for our final confirmation from our MCC. As soon as we receive final word, we will share it with you. And you see our MCC crew getting ready for the moment. Anxiously awaiting, getting their stations ready. Here in Tokyo, in our US office and our Luxembourg office, everyone is awaiting. Now we are around three minutes before landing. You can see the tension in everyone's faces. But these are professionals and we trust them. Now we see the speed of our lander in the upper right corner, around 700 kilometers per hour, under seven kilometers above the surface. We are getting closer and closer. The lander continues to fire its propulsion system, and we are now around L minus two minutes. Close to 500 kilometers per hour, under six kilometers above surface. We are only moments away from the planned touchdown on the lunar surface. Everyone who worked on this mission is anxiously anticipating how it will turn out. Please note again, communication with our lander may be interrupted during descent and it might therefore take a little bit of time for our ground crew to confirm the status of our lander. We will share the latest situation with you as soon as possible. Even if you see the lunar landed, the lander, lander landed on the surface, we will update you as soon as possible. Now only 200 kilometers per hour, under three kilom kilometers above the surface. Only one minute to go. One hundred ninety, one hundred eighty kilometers per hour, under two kilometers. The lunar lander keeps breaking. Now in vertical orientation, only one kilometer above the surface remaining. We're getting closer and closer. About 120 kilometers per hour, 700 meters. We will soon have reached the planned landing time, at which point 
I might ask you to wait for a few moments for us to confirm the status. 60 kilometers per hour, 20 meters, final approach. 10 meters. And our simulation might have lost its connection with the MCC. No reason to, for concern yet. We are still seeing the animation going. Three kilometers per hour, only meters above the surface now. And now we are at the moment of planned landing time. Again, everyone, please give us a few moments to confirm. We hope to maybe receive a message from our MCC soon. If that is not the case, then we will need a few moments to continue investigations and we'll update you as soon as we have new information. Our MCC crew standing by, waiting to confirm. Everyone is laser focused right now. You can really feel the tension. Please allow us a little bit more time to confirm the status of our lander. Our MCC ground team keeps working, confirms whether or not we can receive telemetry from our lander. So they are continuing to investigate. This process may still take a little bit of time. And We see all different kinds of expressions here. It's really difficult to tell from our seats. And it is so difficult feeling powerless now, but all we can do is cheer them up and trust them. Please give us a few more moments. We are still in the process of confirmation. The team keeps on working tirelessly. A 
attempting to reestablish communication with our lander after the planned landing time has passed. Thank you everyone for your patience. I know everyone wants to know the status of our lander. And I assure you, our crew is working on it as we speak. So while we continue to confirm, we will be with you again in a few moments. Thank you very much for your patience, and we will give you updates as soon as we have them. Thank you for your patience, and we'll be right back.
Thank you for your patience. As of now, our MCC crew is still continuing to investigate the lander's status. So we ask you to bear with us a little bit longer and we will be right back. Thank you for your patience.
At this moment, we have not able to confirm successful landing on the lunar surface. Our engineers at MCC is continue to investigate the current status of the lander. Currently, uh, we have not uh, confirmed the communication from the lander. We already confirmed that we have established the uh, communication until the very end of the landing. However, now we lost the communication. So we have to assume that we, uh, our, it may, uh, uh, we could not complete the landing on the lunar surface. Our engineers uh, will continue to investigate uh, the, the situation and then we will update you the, the further information once we finish the uh, investigation. At this moment, what I can tell is we are very proud of the fact that we have already achieved many things uh, during this mission one. As I said, uh, we have been secured the communication at the very end of the uh, landing. That means we acquired actual flight data during the landing phase. That is great achievement for the future missions, mission two and the mission three. To that end, that is important to feedback what we learned from this mission one to mission two and the mission three. That's why we built our sustainable business model uh, to continue our effort for the future missions. I'd like to thank you all of the employees who have, who have been contributed to this mission since the beginning of this uh, company and then to the present. And then also our families who continue to support us and the sh our shareholders, act our partners and our customers and the suppliers and the everyone who believe in iSpace vision. We will keep going Never quit Luna Quest. Let me allow to speak in Japanese to the Japanese audience next. Gezai no tokoro, Mission One no landdown desu ne, Gezmei no chakriku ga kakunin dekit e orimasen. Wareware no desu ne, MCC no engineer ga ima desu ne, え、え、今、え、ここで、え、私たちが言えることはですね、え、すでにミッション 1 これをもとにですね、我々の次の使命はミッション 2、この会社
、われわれを信じて、われわれのビジョンをです、ね、信じ続けてくれた株主の皆様、ハクトワールのパートナーの方々、そしてお客様、サプライヤーの方々、多くの皆様にです、ね、感謝を申し上げたいと思います。我々は歩み続けます Thank you, Hakamada san, and thank you to everyone who joined us for our coverage today. Please don't forget to follow iSpace on, and Hakto R on social media for future updates. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Also, if you are in Tokyo, you can see a life size model of our Series 1 lander at the Neo Tsukidekura Sten exhibition at the National Museum of Emerging Science and Innovation here on Odaiba. And don't forget, never quit the lunar quest. どうもありがとうございました。<笑>